Hello, chemists and biochemists. I want to talk to you about one more kinetic parameter, arguably a kinetic parameter that's kind of kind of tying things together. And it's also kind of tying things together because it's not just one kinetic parameter, but instead it's two kinetic parameters that you're comparing to one another. So this last kinetic parameter is a ratio of K cat over KM. Okay. Now, to unpack and review these a little bit, KM is number of substrates, molecules. I'm just going to draw an arrow converted to products per second. Okay. So that's K cat. Now, KM is one way that you could look at that is substrate concentration that, to put it simply, gets you to Vmax divided by two. Okay. Now there are some things that you can extract from that, well, one of which is a low KM is an indication of a high affinity. Because think about it as it does not take a lot in order to get to half of your maximum velocity. So it doesn't take a lot of that substrate in order to get your enzyme to half of its, well, half of its maximum velocity, half of its maximum activity. Now you can look at the opposite of that, high KM, is going to mean low affinity. So this right here, this ratio, we're looking at, well, what does the enzyme do? How many substrate molecules can that enzyme convert to a product in a second? So we're taking a, a perspective of what's the enzyme doing? And we're looking at Km, which is what is the affinity that our enzyme has for that substrate? So one thing that we know is that if we have a very large K-cat, that means we're converting tons and tons of those substrates to products in a second, okay? Then if we have a very small Km, then we are using a small amount of our substrate to get to half of our maximum velocity. So it doesn't take a lot to kind of get the wheels moving. So in an ideal setting, we want a large K-cat, meaning the enzyme can convert tons of substrates to products in a second, but we also want a small Km because we want to kind of pick out that substrate and grab it and convert it to a product when, even when there's a very low concentration. So with a large number in the numerator and a small number in the denominator is going to mean, well, the larger the number, the better, okay? So as an example, let's say we had a K-cat that was 150. And let's say that we had and really the power of this ratio is we're able to compare substrates to one another. So let's say that we had, this enzyme has a K-cat of 150 um, or, two, or two different substrates. And then let's say as a KM for um, substrate A that is one and then a KM for substrate B that is 150, or yeah, 150. Okay, what we want is a larger number here. So Kcat over Km, in this case, that would be 150 divided by one. Well, we've got a ratio of 150. And in this direction, we'd have 150 divided by 150, and we would have a ratio of one. So between these two, which one of a, which one of these substrates 
A or B gives us the higher ratio. Well, that would, that's pretty clear that it is A. Now, I found a resource that allowed us allows me to look at different substrate and kind of navigate through, well, some kind of pooled data. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my share to that or that that enzyme, hexokinase. Hexokinase takes ATP and a hexose and converts it to glucose or hexose six phosphate and ADP. Now the power of KCAT over KM allows us to compare substrates. So if we scroll through this, we can find that there's this right here where we can calculate or we can look at reported values of KCAT over KM. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and we've got those KCAT versus KM values. Now, if you look at this paper or look at this table, one of the things that it's displaying is the source. So this is a this is a PubMed link that will take you to whatever that paper is. And in this paper, 647266, that's the, I believe, the PubMed ID, what the authors of this paper were doing was they were comparing hexokinase from this sulfur sphera tocodai. They were comparing D-glucose to D-mannose, and they also looked at um, D-glucosamine. So they looked at these three different sugars, or these, these two sugars and then one sugar derivative. And you know what they found? Well, they found that D-glucose had the highest K-cat K -cat over K-m ratio of 717. The lowest was of those three was this glucosamine. Now, that's the, the power of KCAT over KM. It allows you to compare substrates to one another. It's not simply, well, is a lot of this substrate turned over to product in a given second? Maybe, but you might have to have a concentration 50 times that of another substrate. So what we're looking at is not only how much product is generated by that enzyme, but is that enzyme going to bind that substrate very easily? With a very low KM, your substrate can be bound by that enzyme very easily. With a very high KM, well, your enzyme's not going to have very high affinity. It's unlikely to bind that substrate. All right, I hope this is helpful. Remember, basically KCAT over KM is a measure of enzyme efficiency. Can it get to that substrate and produce a product very quickly? That's what we're getting at. And that's why we looked at it from two different perspectives. The perspective of the enzyme, where we got we looked at our KCAT, and the KM, where we're looking at the enzyme's binding affinity for that substrate. All right. Well, I hope this is helpful and I hope you have a good one.